for a walk. On the road this time. Doesn't matter where you walk, so long as you walk. And walk fast. That's why I always say, so you're out of breath all the time. That's why I'm always out of breath when I do these, these four minutes for deck. So it's deck Klusky. Started the Serious Rider Guild about 1996, I think it was. Very successful. 52 countries were in. About three and a half thousand members. Most of them highly successful, and all of them with complete access to myself. I just love helping people, as you know, you get it. Had a nice email from the guy I've been mentoring for a number of years now, David, and he he was asked to record live trumpets by a client. He was terrified, so he wanted to know deck any insight on the recording live trumpets. And this is what I said to him. So David, I've been at this game a long time and I've learned a few things about live trumpets. In the old days it was really easy. You had the whole orchestra assembled by a booker. You told the booker the type of musicians that you want and they just booked them and that was it. Nowadays you get in touch with the instrumentalists yourself, the session musicians. So it's more difficult. And then, once you had the trumpets and all the other guys, the saxes and all that booked, then you had an arranger who wrote all the music. And it was easy. Just went into the studio with the producer, probably yourself, and uh, recorded them. It was easy. Then mixed, and the story. Now it's all totally different. And what David has to do is have three trumpet players. So I advised him on how to get the three trumpet players in the first place. Use a good booker. Tell the booker what you want, what type of session it is. And they will get you the proper guys. I warned him that session musicians like that are notoriously not on time. You've got to be absolutely vicious with them. You've got to have a clock clearly visible. I always bring a clock with me, a big kitchen clock, and I put it on the studio desk. And that says a lot of things. It says I mean business and I want it done to time. I've been in studio situations where I couldn't get the musicians out of the pub. As serious as that, major sessions. So that's the first thing to learn. Next thing is, always, always, always have the parts written. And that's very important. I told him a quick story. Oh, years ago. A friend of mine was a Nigel Hopkins, one of the best trumpet players around. And I was going to three track him, so it was like three trumpets. Sensational player. I didn't know he was an alcoholic at the time, but that's a different story. Came in, and I made the drums for mistake of no music. So I hummed him what I wanted him to play. It was fine. And then, I wanted to put three trumpets down. So he says, oh, I've got a great harmony line. And I fell for it. And I know this of all from producing back singers. Never do that, always wait. It. So we went in and did the second harmony. And it was, it was okay. Changed it a bit, changed a few notes here and there. Reasonably good. Then the problem started. Trying to get the third line to fit in with the other two lines. Two hours later, we were still manfully at it. And eventually I called a halt at the proceedings. I said, chaps, everybody, go down to the pub, I'll write it. So I wrote it, came back, and in 10 minutes the whole thing was done. So I said that to David, make sure it's written. Next thing I said to him was that recording live trumpets sounds exciting, sounds wonderful. You've got to get great feel and everything. Well, I said to David, I've long since given up using live, live trumpets. There's so many great samples around. And if you're a good arranger, which thank goodness I am, with good technical knowledge and good theoretical knowledge of music, I can make three trumpets with samples sound 50 times better than the best trumpet players in the live situation. I said he'd be shocked when he records the trumpets first and how small they sound, as I always am. I said, make sure you record them in a proper dead studio 
Don't get taken in by the logic that, oh, the room sounds great. Once you have room reverb on there, which is picked up from the room, you simply cannot get rid of that. It's like compression. There's two things you can't get rid of. If you've got compression on something, you cannot get rid of the compression. If you've got reverb on something, or echo, and record it on, you simply cannot get rid of it. So you want it as dead as possible, and then put the effects on afterwards. And I said, this is what is recognized as the best way of treating trumpets. You record them properly. Hopefully use a couple of mics. I would suggest at different distances, one close in and one quite far away. That will give you a bigger sound immediately. And you can always get rid of the second microphone because we'll be on a second track. And you can even use a third microphone. That's what we do with guitars. And, and using it in trumpets, the same technique. What you need is an excellent digital echo, a dedicated digital echo. Most of the effects units will do it. You can even do it on the screen. Some of the plugins. I'm not a great fan of plugins. And what you do is this: you use the whatever you're using for the digital echo must be timed to the BPM of the track. Make absolutely sure of that. And it's easy to get the BPM of this track. Usually, if you're doing a plug-in, just it'll tell you immediately. A lot of effects units. Big hill, I'm going up again now. A lot of effects units, you just tap in BPM, and that's good. But it's important to get the BPM right, so the echo will be in time with the track. You think you're getting away with it? Not doing that? Don't. Oh, I've got to show you this. Isn't that lovely? Look at those snowdrops. Isn't they beautiful? Wow. Just coming up to Stanton Prior now where I live. I'll show you where I live. That's it over the other side of the road. So, get the echo right. Then feed the echo directly into a good class reverb unit. Because the clas classics are lexicon. I'm very blessed, I always say, to have a lexicon, the best reverb unit, for brightness and top end, particularly. So you feed the trumpets straight in to the effects unit, which has got the echo on it, and then straight in from there into the reverb. And then the reverb to taste, really. I can't tell you how long the reverb should be. It's to taste. So here we are. There's Stanton Pryor. Um, so that's it. That's what I said to David. That's the way we do it. And I wish you luck. It'll be a fabulous result. Of course, if you've got any questions, just put on the blog below. And join the Serious Riders Guild. Then you can talk to me directly from the session. So Deck, what should I do now? And I'll tell you. Okay. Deck Klosky, Serious Riders Guild. Mickets.com. See you next week. Bye.